Hey guys, it's Doug from Motion Raceworks. What is up today? I'm super excited to show you our newest product line, our billet top loader catch can. This thing is awesome. It's designed from the ground up. We threw everything we knew and had with catch cans out the window and decided to put a bunch of goals on a piece of paper and see if we could accomplish them without making any sacrifices. So from day one, I met with our engineers, which if you don't know much about our company, our engineers are awesome. They're also car guys. They're also building state-of-the-art, cool cars, coming up with new innovative ideas. So we basically put a think tank together and decided these are all the things that are important to us. These are all the ways we can improve what's out there on the market and what we had to offer previously and uh, redesign a catch can. So some of them are very small. Some of them are very important, but small. Some of them are a big change in a design and a big offering. So. This catch can is completely modular. It's completely billet. In the past, most catch cans are all fabricated, welded, and for that reason, um, you always have a limited quantity. There's always seemed to be a little bit of a lag in uh, inventory and producing them, but being billet, we can turn these things out as fast as we want to. This is the first variation of a number of them to come. We are gonna adapt this thing to as many uses as we can. This is a single, or this is a dual 10 O-ring version. So that means you could have two 10 AN lines to it. In the very near future, we will have a single 12 AN as well as some other options. So our goal is to basically cover this whole market and give you guys options depending on what you're working on. We wanna do that as easily and reproducible as possible, which is why it's all billet. So as you can see, this thing's a little different than catch cans that are on the market. Like I said before, it's called our top loader catch can. And what that means is the fittings come in from the top and shoot down. This is important for a couple of reasons. A lot of catch cans that you'll see on the market might be a similar size to this, but the fittings for the inlets are here or stacked here. And basically what that does is it limits the amount of usable room inside of the catch can. While I don't promote filling this sucker all the way to the top, you should definitely keep an eye on things a lot closer. It definitely gives you a little bit more wiggle room. If you've ever filled a catch can to the top, it gets real messy real quick. You're basically pressurizing a big puddle of liquid and no matter how good you have things baffled, the liquid's gonna try and come out and get inside of your engine bay. The other benefit to this is basically your um, air charge, hopefully with very little particulate, particulate is coming into the catch can and it's hitting a wall and dropping that uh, particulate down basically letting the air go, the particulate, which is heavier, is gonna to stick to the wall, drip down, and we're gonna accomplish our goal of keeping the oil here and getting the air out of here. If you aren't familiar with what a catch can's for, if you've never had a boosted combo, if you are from you know the naturally aspirated world where you used to plumb your valve covers and the headers and everything else, they accomplish one goal or are supposed to accomplish one goal. You're trying to ventilate crankcase pressure, which builds up in high horsepower engines inside of your crankcase that's working on the bottom side of your pistons, it gets past rings from being worn out, depending on how loose, how big a gaps you have in your rings, and then also just from moving around RPM. And it gets it out of the crankcase via the valve covers or valley cover and uh, puts it into this catch can. And like I said before, you're trying to get the oil separated out and hopefully you have very little oil coming in and you're trying to get the pressure out. That will not only save uh, horsepower because you have less forces working on the bottom side of the piston and moving doing weird things with oil underneath but you also keep the seals in your engines if you're familiar with the LS series of engines or the coyotes or any of that they all use o-ring seals throughout the engine so in a previous paper gasket style engine a lot of times it would you know start to work on the intake cut gasket it would make a mess it would push the ends out valve cover gaskets etc on these ones are so sealed up that they tend to push out the crank seal in the front or the rear main and that becomes a huge problem. Those are just press fit in, they're just held by uh, interference and they always seem to be the culprit, especially in anything that you put a supercharger or a turbo on. So venting is very important for these combos. Boosted combos make a ton of crankcase pressure and while I don't typically ever run a vacuum pump on my boosted combo, some folks do, most times I've found that just having a proper ventilated catch can is more than sufficient for accomplishing the goal of getting the pressure out. Another feature that think is this really cool about this thing is that it has clockable mounting. In the past, 
like I said, if you have a fabricated cover and it just has tabs off of it for mounting, you're going to mount this thing and it's going to have fittings coming off. And then you're trying to play guesswork whether this comes off as a 180 and a 45 or you may order it that way and then it gets there and you're all ready for your weekend project and all you're like, oh man, I need a 150 degree fitting and a 60 degree fitting. I've done it a million times. And even at the end when this is all done, for some reason the lines just never lay out real nice and it looks kind of ugly in my opinion. Sometimes they are welded on the side, but they need to be welded on the other side. And uh, so we wanted to make mounting and clocking very easy on this. Anytime, basically, any combo that I've seen either needs a couple of 90s here or it needs a couple straights. Um, typically, if it's mounted anywhere in the engine bay, the corners, the sides, um, on the strut tower or in the rear, you can get away with just having two number 10 straights or whatever size it is. And then whatever it goes to the valve cover, your hoses are going to run in unison, look really nice, and go to your valve cover. And then you should know how you're coming into your valve cover ahead of time. So te technically, typically, you can go ahead and just order the fittings you need and it takes a lot of the guesswork out of all of this. The other thing for me that was very important with um, the design of this, like I said, was clockability and also mounting. You know, when you have like a clamp style mount, that's great and everything, but trying to mark the holes and then drill them and take the can on and off, it just becomes a really uh, not great process. And for me, I always seem to drill a hole in the wrong side, in the wrong place or I end up making the holes really big. And then the bolts, you need three sets of washers to try and uh, keep everything in place. This thing has a really cool mounting bracket. It bolts right to the top of it. And as you can see, there are a bunch of mounting holes on the very top and that allows you to clock all of this. So depending on what angle you want or depend, you know, will dictate what two holes you're going to use. But the best part about it is, for instance, on my 72 Nova, I mounted this inside of the fender between the tire and the front and the door, I guess, on the car. So there's that, that back of the fender that it comes way away from the firewall. I mounted this inside of there. Well, traditionally, if you have one that has a bunch of uh, tabs on it to mount, it can become kind of a pain in the butt to um, hold everything there, mark it, drill it, because you're trying to drill around the catch can. This thing was really easy. I just held this up, uh, figured out which angle I wanted to mount it at, and then you take the catch can away, you mark this, you pull it away, you drill it, put it back up, bolt it, and then you just put your two bolts in the top. So it took it from being a two or three person job or just a real pain to a very simple process. I was able to get it mounted, done very quickly, very easily and uh, didn't frustrate the heck out of me. So that's a huge benefit to this. Um, as far as baffling in the cans, I'm not sure when catch cans became readily used in motorsports. I would assume way back in the 60s, 70s, maybe earlier. A lot of them, even today, are not baffled. And what that means is that the air is coming in fittings and then everything is completely open to the filter. And what that does is it just soaks the filter in oil. So you'll see if you go to races um, or the track on a Friday or Saturday night, you will see a lot of people have a sock or a sweatband or a t-shirt with zip ties over this because this thing is just soaked in oil dripping because there's no baffling to keep the oil separated from the air coming out. That is a pretty huge issue and some of them are baffled and just not baffled very good. So that will also happen. Now I can't say that if you have an engine with a hurt ring or you just have some crazy amount of boost that you won't ever get oil in any filter no matter how many baffles you put in it. But our baffling system is a dual baffle system and it knocks the oil down and gets the air pressure out without soaking the oil filter. That's the first thing a lot of people ask us, do you have a uh, sock for the top? And my answer is you don't need that. You don't need a sock, it's baffled. And technically the way it comes in 90 and has two baffles inside it is almost triple baffled. So that's gonna keep the oil where it needs to be and get the pressure out where it needs to be also. So what we're trying to accomplish in this whole scheme is not just to have this be where the oil collects at. We want it to save it here. We wanna be able to drain it out and have the air get out without making your engine bay an oily mess and having speckles of oil and particulate all over the engine bay. So the last piece of this, the bottom has a drain as any catch can would have. So we spent a decent amount of time on trying to find a pet cock that didn't leak. If you look at this pet cock, it actually has an O-ring built into it rather than just like a taper seal. 
and this thing seems to be reasonably repeatable. It doesn't lock up and break. Um, there's a lot of terrible pet cocks on the market and it, for something that's used as often as this, they seem to be prone to failure, which is why we also included in a little protective sleeve, a just a NPT plug. For my cars, I always put the NPT plug in it. It seems like every so often, if you have a pet cock, you'll be in between rounds and you're changing ice or you're looking at data logs and you drain your uh, catch can and you forget to tap it back off because it's empty, it stops leaking. So you pull the pan out, you make the line, you do your burnout, it starts leaking oil on the track on the starting line, they wave you off. Or worse yet, you go down the track and the oil gets on your own tire. So I prefer NPT, but this is an option. They both come in a package and uh, I think it definitely gives you something that you can use. As far as capacity of this catch can, it holds about 20 ounces. As I mentioned before, Having a top loader design allows us to run more uh, oil in the system before it becomes an issue as far as getting into the fittings. So technically our cans should hold more oil than most, um, but I don't really suggest filling them up that high. If you have a vehicle that is filling this up re reasonably quickly, it's either you know a issue with your baffle on your valve covers, if you're using grabbing oil from somewhere where there's a lot of oil activity and it's making it around the baffle, you might consider moving it, or there might be something hurt inside of your engine. Otherwise, just get used to emptying this often. A lot of people ask us how big it is, and uh, we try to, you know, tell them if you're filling up more than this in one pass, you probably have some issues, or you need to uh, create a bigger catch can tank in the back. If you do fall into that category where you run methanol and big amounts of boost and your motor set up for that. A lot of the Pro Mod and Radio vs. the World and a lot of just the um, boosted cars nowadays will actually just run a big, it looks like a mini fuel cell in the back of their vehicle and it has two or three filters. And that's because that with methanol or ethanol, you have an extreme amount of crankcase pressure. The nature of those two fuels creates crankcase pressure that uh, builds up and they need something better and you'll either see them running multiple filters in a huge tank because they actually will fill it up so much um, and a lot of those guys don't try to baffle out the oil particulate or they'll run a chimney that goes out the trunk lid of the car but this is going to be a great option for the guys that aren't those guys uh, two number tens it's great for an e85 small block an ls an lt a coyote any of that stuff two number ten uh, lines are great for combos that are, you know, and up to 1,500, 2,000 horsepower. That's going to be plenty of ventilation. While we are talking about it, I get a lot of questions from people asking, how big of line should I run? And my answer is as big as you can afford to buy fittings for. You can never oversize vent lines for a valve cover or for crankcase breathing. You can definitely undersize them, but cost constraints, size constraints, all of that stuff can become an issue. So a lot of folks will just try to, uh, you know, find something in the middle ground. And 10 a.m. typically works really well. You get into the big combos, number 12, number 16 size lines are what you want to run. And uh, hopefully that kind of adds a little insight to that. If you have a question about your combo, definitely give us a call. We're happy to kind of spec things out for you talk through some things and uh, get an idea what you have and, and what you should possibly be running so i'll put our number in the description below and uh, definitely email us at sales at motionraceworks.com so at the very same time we developed this catch can we decided that we wanted to have a way to make a very nice clean baffled attachment for valve covers for the folks who can't weld or want something just a little bit nicer or want a little bit more of an intricate baffling system who don't want to fill a catch can up on a regular basis. So we just released this new billet valve cover attachment. It is a dual baffle. It has an internal baffle, which you can see right here. It's bolted in, so there's no direct oil stream that can make it inside of the number 12 O-ring fitting. And then it has one that bolts on from the underneath. Now this thing will do an extremely great job of knocking oil particulate and keeping direct stream oil out of your lines that go to your catch can and that's going to greatly reduce how much oil ends up in there every week or every pass down the track so this is definitely a cool option i can weld aluminum i still took my welded bungs off and put this thing on it is an o-ring seal on the bottom and it bolts in with three bolts so no longer are there any needs to try and dig up somebody in your town that can weld fittings in or uh find a welder or pay for a welder yourself. These things will work great for you. 
They're extremely effective. They're pre-baffled, so you don't have to guess on any of that. And if you have a drill and a drill bit, you can accomplish what's needed to put this thing in. These valve cover attachments are available as a pair in black anodized or polished, so it'll match your billet or polished valve covers. And then the black anodized is really cool also. We know how, how uh, popular that is getting. If you have any questions on these billet valve cover attachments, see the link in the description. We have a link to a video that talks more in depth about these, and then we also have a link to our website to buy this. We also have some links to the actual catch can in the description. We offer this alone or as a kit with all the fittings you need so you can install it all in one afternoon on your ride. So thank you for tuning in guys. We are super excited about this product line. It's definitely gonna be something we can expand upon. This solution here is a great solution for anybody wanting to vent crankcase pressure and collect the oil to keep it off their engine bay and to keep it off their tires. Thanks for tuning in. We will catch you next time.